Bristol Metropolitan Academy is an inner city secondary school that has over 50% EAL pupils. Being such a diverse school means that the lessons taught here often have children from many different backgrounds, some of whom have very little English. The challenges which we face are, are many really. On the one hand, many of our students are from an EAL background, so they, they need a lot of support in terms of acquisition of language. Traditionally, many of our students you know, come from backgrounds with poor literacy, um, so teaching them a modern foreign language does come with certain difficulties. Um, on the other hand, um, many of our students ha have a uh, home language already, so there's something to draw upon in terms of um, language learning. But really, the key thing for us is that if they're bright enough, we, we identify that very early and, and, and they fly, they absolutely fly with the support we give them. One interesting feature of MFL teaching at the Academy is the provision of Arabic lessons. These pose particular challenges for the resourcing of lessons and for the classroom language support which is needed. Saeed Ben Charma, the class teacher for the lesson, is from Morocco and has been teaching French and Arabic at the school for four years. Currently, he's preparing to teach a Year 8 Arabic lesson. We are one of the few schools in the country that offer Arabic as a mainstream subject. And this is for four years now. And I would say it was a success because it, uh, it, it, it succeeded to attract kids from different backgrounds, from different ethnicities, ranging from the white British to the Afro-Caribbeans, to the Asians, to the Somalis. And or if you get into any class in our school, for example, you can see that mosaic. Uh, and the fact that Arabic is written in a different script makes it, uh, makes it more fun for, for, the, for the students that because they are willing to learn something new, something different. Saeed's class is very diverse and will include pupils from a range of different countries, including Britain, India, Somalia, Albania and the Philippines. Also in the lesson there will be a support teacher on hand to help support a section of Somali children who understand little English. Today's lesson is going to be about we learn around 12 words for the school subjects. We will learn them not only orally but also in the written form. <laughs> And what do you think is this picture about? Uh, it's art. Has done? Yeah? It's art. For, what is it in Somali, Mr. Wise? Sower. Sower, yeah. Very good. Uh, Veda? History. History, yeah. Now, in Urdu? Tariq? History. Is history enough? In Bengali. That's good then. Right, okay. What do you reckon? What do you think? Which subject? Rokaya? Uh, French. Has Angie done? Yeah, French. In, uh, in Somali? Francis. Francis. Okay, and the last one? English. What's that? English, yeah. In Albanian? Angli. Very good. Yeah, all together. Now in Arabic, okay? Arasm. The first thing I do is I introduce, like I say, a set of pictures and I get the student to guess what do they mean, be it in English or in their own language. And then after that, I do introduce the words, for example, in Arabic or in the Arabic script and then the transcription. And then we, we practice them afterwards. Uh, Veda, say it again. Excellent. Heather? Excellent. Right. Rukhaya? Excellent. Halima? One of the strategies is to use more visual stuff. You know, we got kids from different backgrounds, from different ethnicities, and with different languages. So, to make sure that 
everything is understood is we use pictures a lot for this reason. Communication is a big challenge for the teacher, especially when the pupils have very little understanding of English or the subject language. Therefore, extra support is often needed, particularly with instruction. OK, what you're going to do now is I want you to work in pairs. OK, I got here some cards about the words we just learned right now. What I want you to do is to get the cards that are written with the school subjects written in the Arabic script and match them up with the transcription. In the, the class today, there are a few Somali kids whose English is not as good as their Somali. And the are they going to be a support teacher there to help translate the, the instructions, the help understand the key words that we're going to learn, to make their learning easier? At Bristol Metropolitan, support of this kind is always on hand, allowing the teacher to concentrate on the rest of the class whilst ensuring everyone is keeping up. Yes, very good. Because one of the objectives we set at the beginning of the lesson is to learn those words, not just orally, but also in the written form. And uh, the main objective of that, the cards game is to reinforce or help them learn the script, the Arabic script, which is a bit, which is different, completely different from English or their own language. Finished. OK, now we're going to do a game, OK? The same thing. Before what you did, you, you matched up the transcription with the Arabic script. This time, we will match up the English with the Arabic script, OK? To see how we are doing, how good we are we doing, OK? <laughs> OK, look how it works. I will do it starting from the beginning. Which is one? What is sport in Arabic? Arriyada. To make learning fun for my students, I always try to introduce as much as I can uh, the, uh, some games using the interactive board. This is to reinforce what we will be learning. And really, this attracts their attention and motivate them. Very good. Hassan Jidden. Hassan Jidden. OK, next one, Arabic. Which is Arabic in, in Arabic? Halima? al Arabiya. al Arabiya. What do you think? Which one is al al Arabiya? Sometimes it's not. Second one. Huh? Second one. Come on, Shannon, do it. Yeah, using your finger, you can drag it to. That's the one. Second. This simple word game is a good indicator for Saeed to see how well the pupils, in particular the children with limited English, have picked up the words he's introduced throughout the lesson. Right, OK, Mustafa, you come again and uh, finish it off. OK, you can finish them off if you want, or... Right, leave the last one for... Wait, wait, OK, Mumna, you come here. Yes. Very good. Handles. Everything is correct. Hasn't it done?
think they really the language is in the air is really good because it helps you communicate with people outside the school. Especially the teachers, they're really good and they help us a lot and motivate us to do the asset languages when we are ready, so it's really good. Teachers are really supportive. They don't just leave you le leave you behind. This school has such like different different people in different different classes. Like it's not like only like white people in one class and then other people in other classes. Nothing like that. You, everyone's mixed. The techniques they they, they teach us um, that's, that's just great. So when I came in here, my English wasn't that good. So I got help from my Somali teachers, and they helped me a lot. It's always helpful if the teacher can explain things in your own language, especially if you don't know English or anything like that. I think our school is really special because we got a lot of different students from a different background. That's what makes it special and it would be make, makes it easy to understand more and it will help you to learn more language. Some of the kids that they come to, uh, to our schools never been to school before. So this in itself is a challenge because you bring them from a background that they have not been exposed to an educational system or to a school and you know they come to the class and there are some code of conduct or general rules of the school that you have to respect and still they have they don't they don't get used to it to such rules they don't get used to such a new atmosphere they are in the Arabic lesson is over but as the class makes their way home, how does Saeed feel they did with today's objectives? The lesson just finished now. The objective was to teach them 12 school subjects in Arabic and to memorize them not only orally, but in the written form. Few of them got 12 words, some of them got eight and some of them got six, which means that I need to go through it again. So that's why I will set homework for it. And, but generally speaking, I would say that the lesson went well and uh, the kids enjoyed it. From observing Saeed's lesson and talking to some of the children, the message seems to be, keep it simple. Use visuals to help the children follow the lesson, games and ICT to make the learning fun, and support staff to ensure children who don't speak English remain engaged with the lesson. My advice to those teachers who are in the same position like me, they are teaching kids from different backgrounds or ethnicities, do your homework by learning about them as much as you can. Because when you learn about them, that means you will be able to tailor the, your, your teaching or, and the learning process to their needs. And if you make an effort to learn about the culture, about their language, definitely th themselves, in return, they will put time in your lesson and they will learn more.